Hello and welcome back to Advanced Conversation and Professor Kent Lee here as usual. Sort of a misconception I want to talk about is humanities and humanities degrees. Um, what are some misconceptions about humanities, the study of humanities, humanities majors, um, people who study humanities, um, and the value of humanities? What are some common misconceptions? that people have. Okay, I want to kind of address some common misconceptions. You know, to some degree, sometimes humanities people might be kind of responsible for this. So, for example, uh, some examples of misconceptions. There's a stereotype that you get a humanities degree and you can't get a real job after college. Uh, this is especially so in Western culture. And so there's a stereotype of a, of a person with a PhD in philosophy who is working as a waiter or waitress. An historian person with a college degree in history or language studies he has to work as a, at, at McDonald's because they can't get a real job. Uh, and sometimes that's true, I think, because, and I, I, because uh, for example, I was a humanities major. My major in college was German with a minor in English. And I was in a similar situation. I was only thinking about getting into graduate school, a master's program in linguistics. I wasn't really planning carefully, though. So I just cared about learning languages and learning humanities, and that was cool. Um, and I didn't anticipate that the economy would kind of go down. The economy went down, which made it harder for me to actually um, get funding in order to afford to go to graduate school. And I had to sit out for about a year. And that kind of seems to feed into the stereotype. Uh, in, there's an also no joke. Maybe I told you this. Uh, for example, a scientist will ask, "How does how does that work?" Or an engineer will ask, "How can I make that work?" And a humanities major will ask, "Would you like fries with that?" Like a McDonald's employee is kind of taking your hamburger order and says, "Would you like fries with that?" Bit unfair, but uh, I was kind of a representative of that stereotype um, because I didn't plan carefully. Um, I just thought about taking all the fun language courses I could in linguistics and getting to grad school, and, uh, and but I didn't plan. I didn't think about maybe getting a, a proper job after college before graduate school. Um, but the reality is it's um, not unusual for people with humanities degrees in Korea or in Western countries to get jobs with companies, businesses, banks. Uh, why? Because humanities majors have learned certain skills that can be valuable for a oh, business or other work environment, especially if you plan things carefully. I mean, maybe do a second major, or at least take some classes on something kind of more practical. Um, you have... Most of you are, doing, are language majors, um, maybe other humanities majors. What's the practical value of your degree, your, your degree in English or German or philosophy or history? What's the practical value of it? Other than the joy of learning, which itself is a powerful motivator. It was for me in college. But what's, what are other practical values? social values, as well as job-related value for a company job. Why should you study humanities? What's the value? What's the practical and social value of that? Discuss for a while.
Okay, if you saw the movie Jurassic Park, the original movie from, uh, what was it, the 90s or something? A long time ago. Um, I think there's a scene in which uh, um, Jeff Goldblum says something like this. The scientists were so busy uh, thinking about whether they uh, could clone dinosaurs, they didn't stop to think whether it was a good idea. And there's this meme on social media based on that, Science will tell you, uh, for example, science can tell us how to clone dinosaurs. Humanities, humanities will tell you why that is not a good idea. And really, I mean, cloning dinosaurs is actually probably impossible. The DNA breaks down over time, so there's probably no way we can recover um, enough DNA to actually clone dinosaurs, thank God. I mean, would you want those kinds of things roaming around? I don't think so. I don't know. Wouldn't be nice. Even the little cute ones would be a problem. So this kind of points to some of the value of humanities degrees. It can help you develop uh, different kinds of reasoning and thinking, thinking skills. For example, logical reasoning. Regardless of what humanities major you do, but especially if it's something like philosophy or something that involves some philosophical thinking uh, or analysis, some kind of analysis, analytical work, humanities, social sciences, whatever your degree is, you learn logical reasoning skills, analytical skills, critical thinking skills that are important. And that's something that a company might be interested in, your thinking skills. So if you focus on developing those, uh, throughout your uh, four years or five years in college, focus on developing those kinds of skills so that when it comes time to interview for, interview for a job and they ask, why should we hire you? You have some reasons to give. I developed these kinds of skills from my courses and from my other experiences as an English major, as a philosophy major. So think about particular kinds of reasoning skills and examples of uh, how your reasoning skills have developed and how you might use that in a company or in a bank or in a government agency or in an NGO. Uh, moral and ethical reasoning abilities, especially again in certain humanities areas, you work on developing uh, your ethical and moral reasoning skills, which is another kind of logical, re logical reasoning and, and another kind of analysis. Um, Cross-cultural understanding, especially by studying languages, you come to an under understanding of other cultures. Uh, as well as through studying literature and history, you come to an understanding of your own culture and other cultures. And that could be especially valuable for international companies. They need that. They need people who can understand other cultures because they want to do business and they want to mark do marketing in other cultures negotiate with people in other cultures and uh, form partnerships. They need people like you with cultural understanding. Uh, social skills and empathy. You, various humanities fields can help develop your social skills and your empathy. Uh, and it's kind of basic to ethical and moral reasoning because a lot of it is based on um, empathy and social skills and understanding other people. Uh, and along with that, understanding people who are different from you, different kinds of people. Uh, so for example, from history, you can learn more about, you know, the, the industrial, industrial revolution in England in the uh, 17, 1800s. And then from reading literature like Charles Dickens, you can actually understand maybe more personally what it was like for the lower classes, for the poor people, you know, for poor kids who worked like slaves in factories and who suffered a lot, uh, or from Les Miserables, you know, that famous opera, um, gives you more of a picture of what life is like for an average person. Many of us are from middle class backgrounds. Some of you may be from upper class backgrounds. It's important to understand what life is like for people in lower classes or minorities, for people in other countries, for poor people, 
it's important in order to under, to have proper moral reasoning skills and social skills, and cultural understanding, to understand people who are different from you. And from humanities, you can understand people who are different from you, who are outside of your social class, who are uh, outside of your culture. That's very important, especially in this global world. Developing your emotional, it can help you with developing your emotional intelligence, your emotional self-awareness. Again, from studying literature, philosophy, history, these can develop your emotional intelligence, your emotional self-awareness, your awareness of other people's emotions, especially, again, people who are different from you, people from, who come from different backgrounds. You can better understand them and their feelings. So it's important for social and moral intelligence. It's important for creative thinking skills. The classic example, Steve Jobs, his ingenious design of his overpriced uh, products. Overpriced, but they're the design is brilliant, beautiful design. The Macintosh operating system, um, especially the iPod, the iPad, Mac OS, um, and um, all of its various flavors. The design is beautiful, partly because Steve Jobs studied calligraphy. And calligraphy is kind of like uh, the artistic writing, paintbrush, and um, use of um, paintbrush, um, um, letter art, and such. Um, calligraphy is what helped him to learn about fonts and font design and graphical user interface, how the user interfaces with the machine, and how to make the user interface uh, better, easier to read, and easier to use for the user. Uh, in many other ways, Learning humanities can develop your critical thinking skills. And this is very important for, uh, this is really important for businesses and they need more people with creative thinking skills. Think of the lawsuit between Apple and Samsung. Um, while I think maybe it, it does look like, I mean, objectively speaking, Samsung copied some things. I think that they were things that were um, not, something that I think Apple really had an intellectual property, property right over. Um, and it's not just Korean uh, companies. I mean, there's so many um, lawsuits between different companies. And I'm, so I'm not singling out Samsung. Um, so many times when one company will just design or copy from another company without you know, thinking creatively and thinking about what the consumer might want or need. Look at Microsoft. Uh, what they've done is nothing but copying ideas from others. And so many times they failed miserably. How many of you own a Zune? You might ask, what is that? That's the Microsoft Music Player. Have you heard of it? Probably not. It's not been around for a few years. It was a big disaster. It was a big failure. Apple came out with its uh, iTunes, its Music Player, and Microsoft thought, oh, we got to do that too. So they tried to create a Zune. Failed. Uh, many of Microsoft's products have failed. They were just cheap copies. How many of you use Bing as a search engine? Probably not. They just thought, oh, Google's got a search engine. We need to do that too. So they put together Bing. Who uses that? I don't I don't know if anybody uses it. You've got Naver for Korean stuff. You've got Google for the rest of the world. That's probably all you need. Uh, uh, there. Outlook Mail is you know not a great mail service. My Outlook is mostly spam. Um, the interface is bad. Um, there, even the Windows operating system is garbage. <laughs> really, um, it's quite inferior to others. Uh, the Apple Macintosh systems and and also to Linux, especially. Linux is so technically superior. Linux is what I usually use. Uh, I don't use Microsoft stuff very much, only when I have to. Uh, so there's a real need for people with real creative thinking skills. Um, develop those through art, through humanities, through literature. Um, 
philosophy. Those are things that develop your creative thinking skills. Learning languages, it develops your mental efficiency, your mental abilities, and the ability to work for a company and do international business for a company. These are all things you can think about, cultivate, and as well maybe take a class and something that would also position you to get a job at a, a sort of company or NGO or government agency where you might work. So in addition to your humanities degrees, uh, also take some other courses that would help you get a job, position you for a job in the real world. Even if you want to go on for a master's or PhD, you might have to take a year off or, or two like I did first before you can get into graduate school. So you need to plan. Uh, you need to plan uh, right now. The job market is hard in um, Korea and other countries, especially now with what's happening in the world. So you need to plan, but you also need to just think about, okay, what is it that I have for my humanities background that can transfer uh, something I've learned in humanities, I can transfer to the work world what we call transferable skill skills. These skills I've been talking about are transferable skills. It's something you kind of gain from your humanities uh, studies and it can transfer into uh, skills that would be good in a workplace, a company that needs your creative thinking skills, they need your language skills, they need your cultural awareness skills, um, they need your moral reasoning skills. These are transferable skills. And as well, don't just spend all your time in the library Get involved in school clubs, develop your leadership skills, your social skills, so that you can better position yourself for a job. Or you can say, I was a leader in a campus organization, or I learned this and this, or I did an internship with a company during the summer, or I spent time living in another country. And your intellectual, uh, personal, personal, cultural development, for example, can be an asset uh, for getting a job. Do community service work, volunteer work, get involved in stuff outside of school. Uh, hobbies that can be intellectually stimulating, um, that can help you develop yourself so that you have something to say in an, inter in an interview, a job interview, for what kind of person you are and your skills and qualifications and the kind of well-rounded and well-developed, interesting person uh, with good skills that a company might like or an organization, whatever. Plan ahead. Um, think about how you can use your humanities degree in a positive way for getting a good job after college. Anyway, good luck on that, and I'll see you later. Bye.